Okay, so hello and welcome back. Um, Chelsea Carter from Alex Carter Brand, and today we are going to be upcycling, um, and we're going to be mending, talking about mending and repairing. So um, to get started, there are a few things that you will need to start with um, that I never really sew ever without having. Um, those items are your seam ripper, just in case you make a mistake. I always keep Taylor's chalk with me. Um, just to kind of indicate points that I want to sew or something that I need to, um, a stitch line or sew line, um, just to be able to identify what that, what those marks look like. This one is broken, but, um, they usually start in a triangle and they're usually anywhere from like one to three dollars, depending on, um, the quality that you buy. So the cheaper ones leave marks and the more expensive ones, um, are going to, uh, evaporate with steam or any sort of pressing that you might do. A ruler to, again, indicate just what I'm sewing, how I'm sewing it um, for accuracy. You always want to keep one of these around. <clears throat> Your measuring tape. Um, for instance, we're gonna be talking about this, but I want if I wanted to know a patch size, it's always good to have um, a flat measuring item but also one that can bend and curve to the body. My tomato of push pins or quilting pins and a needle and thread. I always pre-thread my needles uh, at the end of any workday just to make sure that I always have one ready to go because this can be kind of time consuming. So I thread the needle first and double knot. Uh, and then lastly, your scissors. You just, you know, they could be paper scissors, they could be, um, fabric scissors, um, just something to be able to clip threads. Once you have all of your items here, uh, and I'll get into the machine here in a bit, but once you have all of your items, then you know we can start talking about, um, we can begin with repairs. So this is a pair of my personal jeans that I've loved and had for quite some time, but they literally have holes everywhere, right? So I am going to walk you through how to hand sew this and I'm gonna demonstrate a few stitches. And then I'm also going to discuss how you would machine sew it if you have a machine at home. So this, as you can see, is the back of these jeans. And there is a hole here that has, I have a piece just of fabric scrap um, and it can be whatever you want. You can take denim, you can take wool, you can take broadcloth, um, t-shirt material, whatever you are, whatever you have at home, but also um, whatever you'd like it's in the result to look like as well. Um, I don't really care for these particular pants because I've had them for so long. So we are just gonna take the scrap that I have. It's a lot bigger than it needs to be, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to put it behind the hole above this pocket. As you can see, there's a huge hole here, right? And then these are high rise. So this would be on my backside. This would be visible. Um, so we're gonna put this fabric here. I'm going to push it through so that you can see that there is a hole and I'll bring it closer so you can check that out. So as you can see through the distressed hole, you can see the green, right? So the first thing that you always want to do when mending a repair is pin your patch of your hole in place because it's not going to stay that way while you sew. So you just want to indicate what what that looks like because um, you won't be able to hold and sew at the same time. So I'm just going to take my quilting pins and place it around the hole. And I'm flattening the fabric on the back end as I go so that it's not puckered when I sew it. So I'm pulling, flattening, as you can see with my hands, flattening that and making sure that it's nice and plush. And I'm just pinning the denim part to the, the patch. So the pins are going all the way through, okay? And I think just for the size of this hole, four should be enough. You just wanna secure the perimeter of your hole. And once that's done, you can check to see if you have any puckering or if you need to flatten it out a bit. This material stretches, 
um, the patch does. So it really won't matter um, for me specifically because as I pull that, it lays super flat, as you can see. See, because this has give in it. Um, so I'm going to hold that up, take my needle and thread that is already threaded. I always double, double thread and also double knot, as you can see. And I'm going to, I always start from top to bottom when hand sewing and I'm going to zoom in here so you can see. Be careful of the direction that you put your pins in. I'm so used to sticking myself that it doesn't matter to me, but you always want to aim your, your pins away from your, from your hands. So the top part of this pin should be at the top. Okay. So I'm going to literally start at the top of this hole, push down through and, and I'm going to use black so that you can see this thread. But if you'd like to use a blue or a like color of what you're sewing, then that also works as well. I'm going to loop this through literally in and up. Actually, let's go from the inside and we're going to go from the inside because the knot would be visible on the outside if going from the denim to the patch. So if I were to go this way and come out the other way on the denim, this knot would be on the top of our jeans. We don't want that. So we're gonna come in from the patch side. And I'm gonna start up top where the loop is. Pull taut. And I'm going to go back down and when I hand sew, I like to stitch what they call like a ladder stitch, um, where it literally just goes up, over, down, up, over, down. But you're, you're li it literally is going to look like a machine stitch by the time you're done. So there'll be like little dashes all the way down um, that connect. So you will go down and I'll zoom this, I'll zoom in in a second go down and keep going I do about four or five and then I'll zoom in so that you can see but it should look like mini hyphens and they should be somewhat close together as well as the same distance apart because again we're trying to mimic that of a um, machine stitch which this is what it would look like after three stitches, three or four, you're going to want to loop and secure your stitch. So by that, I mean, come on this side. Okay, and we're going to knot it off. Because it's being sewn by hand, you have to manually provide your security. When you sew by machine, you can use the reverse stitch method to secure your stitch. But when you do it by hand, it doesn't work like that. You have to go in every three to four stitches and just loop, tie off a couple of knots so that it does not come undone. Um, so that's what I'm doing now. I'm going, going in and, and just, I'm gonna grab my threads and pull it through. And now I have one knot. I'm going to do it one more time because again, we want it to be secure and I am only going through the patch. I am not going through the jeans because I don't want them not to be visible, right? So you always wanna make sure you're going through both threads and not just one since we did double thread it. And then you pull it through. So now this is two and because I double threaded it, that knot is gonna be a pretty decent size. So I knotting it twice is fine and then i'm going to resume the thread um the stitching this time when i resume it i am going to do a whip stitch and not a ladder so this one i'm literally just going to take it like this still going through the patch as well as the denim because again you have to secure it one to the other, right? So I'm gonna go in it, and it should almost look like a Twizzler. You're going through both at the same time. 
you're pulling them in and out. Um, and you're going to do the exact same thing with this one in terms of your security. You will want to, after three to four stitches, to not knot it off in the back and the knots should not be visible. Now, I am personally really into the distressed look um, where there's a contrasting stitch and it's not as symmetrical as it should maybe be. But for those of you that are, when dealing with hand stitching, it is very difficult to get each stitch to look the exact same because it's being done by hand and not by a machine. Um, you could also indicate each point um, with a pen or your tailor's chalk and go into that point every time, equidistant from one another, uh, if you are into symmetry in that way. But I personally love for, you know, that whole grungy, that whole grungy vibe. So now I'm gonna go in here, just not push my needle down and I'm gonna rope this off because now it's time to secure the stitch again with our second type of stitch here. And again, I wanna only go through the patch for the knot because I don't want my knot to be visible, right? So you create a loop, push your needle through, and then pull it tight. Do it again. And it's, we're running out of thread here, which is fine because the stitching that you would need to do for hand work, these are the only two that, I, that work and that are effective. Um, and so that's it. So I'm going to clip this thread at the base you could clip it at the base or you can clip it at the very tip of the pin, which is right here. And then if you clipped it at the base of the pin and not the base of the knot, you can also add more security by tying off the excess of thread. So I am going to just clip it at the base because we knotted it twice and we'll be good. Don't lose your needles. Um, I always put mine back into the tomato and I am gonna go ahead now and show you what the top stitch of this looks like. So here we have our ladder stitch, which are like equidistant lines that again, look like those hyphens. And then this one is the whip stitch that literally just kind of continues to loop. I'll take this pin out so you can see better. So whip and ladder or a hand straight stitch. And once you do that around the entire perimeter, then your patch will be added and now you won't be able to see skin through your, the whole of your jeans. So this is one way to mend and repair things that happen often, which I can, I'm sure that everyone can attest to having rips in their jeans um, and everybody wanting them to not be in, um, you know, fragile areas. So. I thought that patching a pair of denim would be the most effective way to show you how to mend and how to use what you have at home upcycling um, in order to do that. Next, we are going to discuss ways to tailor. Okay, so the next at home or um, intermediate way to tailor items that you know are a little too roomy or you just kind of want to show more of your shape um, is going to be, we're gonna cover a little bit of tailoring. So I'm going to use one of my designs to show you um, in a very easy way to tailor something at home. This is my coverall, Alex Carter coverall. It is a men's cut um, and this is a size large. So as you can see, it's pretty boxy um, and it's pretty roomy, right? So for instance, if you wanted this to be more tailored in the leg and tailored in the arms, that is what we're going to discuss. So this is the original and how they ship when ordered. And here is the one that is mine and has been since I released it. So as you can see, the legs are significantly more tailored and I'm going to show, and the arms are as well. This is the same size um, jumper. This is a large as well. So I'm gonna show you what I did. It takes about 
30 minutes start to finish and that goes for all four um, seams, the, both arms and both legs. I'm gonna flip this inside out so that you can see. Okay, once it is flipped inside out, I'm gonna take the leg and show you what I've done here. I also took them up, so. Um, so starting right here, I put this on inside out, indicated how far I wanted my legs to come in with my Taylor's Chalk. I pinned, marked it all the way down, pinned it all the way down, and then I just sewed a line, as you can see. So this is the original seam. And then as you can see here, this is where I tailored it in it, right here. So I did that to both sides, the left side of the pant leg and the right side. And I did the exact same thing with the arm. So this line that you see is the new line. And then now this becomes the access. So this is all that we shaved off. And now this is the parameter of our wrist and our hole. Um, so this is, took 30 minutes to do, um, not very hard at all. Um, and I am going to go ahead and sit and show you the beginning steps of what I did in order to achieve this. So we have our machine, um, it's started. Uh, well, actually let's go ahead and make sure that it's started. And I'm using a home machine for this demonstration um, because I realize that a lot of people don't have the industrial machine. Um, so we're using what I'm sure is gonna be more accessible to the viewers that are gonna be watching this video. Um, very standard threading of this machine. And there are always steps. There's always number indicators of the step in which the steps in which you have to take in order to thread your machine properly. Um, and so there's indications here, 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 down by the needle, and then through your presser foot. So those types of things are super easy to follow. Um, my bobbin is already in here. I do always keep an extra bobbin um, in case the one that I'm working with runs out for whatever reason. And so that is also over here in the things that I always start sewing with. Um, so I've already shown you the pants, um, the guts of the pants and what I did. What I'm going to do now is do it in, in the physical form. It is already done, so I'm just going to go over the stitch that I uh, initially created, but I do want to show you um, the method in which I used to, to achieve it. So. Um, because I've already indicated how far this would come in, I'm going to walk you through the steps before that. So, um, with that ruler that we talked about earlier and keeping it near and also grabbing our Taylor's chalk, um, you would need to indicate how far your body and what type of tailoring methods you, you know, want to do or, or what type of look you're going for. So if you want something to stay a little bit more straight or you really want to take it in tight, just always keep in mind that when doing, when taking things in a lot, you have to a lot for the fabric textile you're working with. Um, this is a woven and it does not stretch. So if I make this as tight as a t-shirt would be, it might rip. Um, so just always leave a little bit of room for give for materials that do not stretch. Um, note that, write that down and um, always make sure that you're taking into consideration the flexibility or the elasticity of the fabrics that you're tailoring. Um, so as I said before, this this does not stretch. So I know that I'm only gonna come in at roughly about an inch and a half or an inch and uh, three quarters just for this particular item. 
if you were at home doing something, you would need to always, always put it on inside out or put it on a mannequin inside out because if you put it on right side, um, facing the right side, then you won't know on the inside what you need to do because all of your markers and all of your indicators are gonna be on the outside. So th then you'd have to do whatever you're doing twice in order to indicate where your tailor line is. So you always work from the inside out when tailoring anything. Um, so we've already flipped this inside out. It's about an inch and three quarters um, starting from the pocket, which is what this white piece is. And so I'm gonna take my tailor's chalk and mark down the line that is already here, but we're gonna pretend like it is not. And see, this chalk comes up really good. Um, and if you were working in white, they do sell this in black, so there you go there. And um, I'm gonna just come down, down, move it up, down, down, and down. Okay, put my ruler and my chalk over there. And you always wanna start from the top of anything that you are sewing. Um, you can start from the bottom with pant legs, but when you're tailoring it, you want the leg to not shift as you're sewing. So I always start from the waist down when tailoring. When sewing, it is okay to go from the um, ankle up. So I'm gonna put this under here. Get my presser foot ready. Drop my presser foot. Make sure that all of my um, tensions and widths of my stitches are correct. Um, so it looks like everything is good to go. So now I can, I always start with my needle manually down in my fabrics. And here we go. You always want to reverse stitch, again, to secure your stitch. We just did this in your hand stitch. You, the secured stitches that double knot, well, with a machine, you start it in with your reverse stitching. Uh, and there's always, always a reverse stitch option on your machine. So I do, the, I do that a couple of times, you know, um, for security purposes. And I am sewing this in an alternate color. Um, when I originally did this, I did do it in red, obviously, but I'm doing it in an alternate color so that you will be able to see. And so because you've indicated this, with your tailor's chalk, it should be very easy for you to follow that line, uh, especially when you use a contrasting color for your tailor's chalk. Um, so it's almost like tracing, but with your machine. Okay. And I won't go all the way down. I'm just going to show you guys briefly. Flip my threads, front and back. And it's done. So as you can see, that gray stitch is what, what we just sewed. That's literally what we just did. I'll get a little closer. So we, we follow that line down, the tailor's chalk line. And then you would carry that throughout all of the seams that you would like to tailor. Once you're done, a lot of times you have to try back on and see and assess like, oh, did I take it in too much? Did I take it in too little? But that is why you always want to start with indicating because if you indicate how far you want it to tailor or be taken in, then you it, you kind of are making it to where it's error proof. Um, so that is how you quickly tailor things at home. That is also how you would upcycle and or mend a repair with um, you know holes in your denim or um, even if you had a hole in your shirt on a seam, you know, you would be able to turn it inside out and just stitch it back down. So I hope this was super helpful. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and let me know. And best of luck.